last night and God is able to make all grace abound towards you that ye always say always, always. one more time say always. always having all sufficiency in all things may abound unto every good work please look at me believers one of the major ways that Satan attacks the saints is in the area of access to supplies access to resources the most distracting aspect of the believers life proven by history is the area of finances and the frustration that comes because of their inability to get needs done do you know I submit to you and I'm, I'm many people here are servants of the living God men and women of God there are men of God today who cannot even have the breathing space to prepare sermons and bless God's people because you get to the table your Bible is on that same table and there are bills and you have to think how do I raise this money and the devil will suggest gather the people and manipulate them tell them lies do something so that you can meet these bills how do you pay for the bills you see that one of the number one sponsor of compromise among believers is the absence of sufficiency I hate to just use the word finance because most people would think we're just talking about money to be incapacitated economically speaking is a dangerous thing hallelujah praise the name of the Lord with all humility and by the grace of God I can tell you that the reason why you are comfortably seated receiving the Word of God and you can guarantee that nobody will manipulate you and try to take advantage of you is not just because of the anointing is that by the grace and the help of God there is sufficiency to be able to get the work of God done so that integrity can be maintained integrity is a function of many factors the will to live a life of integrity is only one the means to support your desire to walk in integrity must also be there there are many people today who pray in tongues in church but when bribe comes they will collect it's not because they are bad they have children in school are we together now yes it's only God that knows what people do for finances and come to church and wear the sanctimonious garment and say, Lord, we thank you. Lack and insufficiency is a curse. Let me repeat it so that you hear. Lack and insufficiency is a curse. I'm saying it as a man of God. Lack and insufficiency is a curse. A curse that affects your mind, not your account. Hallelujah. I know what it means to be in a position where you are incapacitated financially and you are under pressure. The, one of the major causes, statistics will tell us, of the high blood pressure of many men right now is economic issues. They sit down and they watch their children. They just lost their job, downsized them. Madame is not doing anything. And here are four or five or six children. And you know how it is in Africa, plus relatives who have now come, who are staying with you. And all that is on you. And you find people talking to themselves, driving and talking to themselves till they hit a tree without knowing. That's what depression and frustration is doing, including preachers. Some of this anger you see with preachers on stage is financial that, that causes it. People just come on stage and lash out on, on everybody and you are wondering, what did I do? I only came to church to hear the gospel because there are bills. For as long as I live, nobody will manipulate you in this ministry on economic ground. No. When it's time to give, we'll challenge you to give and present it to you in truth. But we fear God too much. But you see, you cannot make a statement like this with an empty account. It's a lie. Just believe me. Whether you believe it or not is the truth. <laughs> Most people have no idea, and I say this with every sense of humility and responsibility, what it takes to run one koinonia service. You've heard me say it, is what many people use for conferences. One koinonia service. 
Hallelujah. You have to be empowered in this end time. If not one day, you will not know when you will carry your own children by yourself and say, please sell this child and bring the money. And don't you say, God forbid, ask the two women in the Bible. Is it in your Bible that women, do you know what it means for a mother to watch her child and boil the child, the Bible says, and eat the child? What kind of hunger is that? No goats, no cows, no nothing. And you see four people crying, two women and their children, and the mother is looking at the child. The child thinks it's compassion, and the mother is preparing to eat the child. That is to tell you what happens. Look, let me tell you, compromise makes a lot of sense in the presence of desperation. Did you hear what I said? Compromise makes a lot of sense in the presence of desperation. By the time they are throwing your child out, and this child is in his final year, and just because of 200,000, 300,000, this child is about to lose his opportunity. You will not know when as a parent, you can simply doctor some, uh, uh, what they call it now, some reports. Your office gives you that privilege. And yet your conscience is standing before God. Do I do this? Do I not? One of the ways that God helps men to walk in integrity and righteousness is to grant them access to sufficiency by the Spirit. I have met many sincere people who have been active participants in the world of compromise and they will tell you apostle i'm not a bad person it is the kind of pressure that is on me pressure that is on me are we together yeah. and if the saints deny this you have only given satan a tool to destroy you Every time God's people serve his purposes and they begin to muse the idea of an exodus, Satan comes to attack them economically. Look at what happened to Israel in Egypt. Hallelujah. They were there, they were given straw. But the moment Moses came and started speaking, Pharaoh said, ah, it's because you have straw given to you. That's why you even have the time to be thinking of an exodus. Stop giving them straw. The time they are using to pray, let them use it. Do you know there are many families today that cannot call for a retreat as individuals, as a couple, as a family. They don't have that luxury of time because Satan has burdened many families with the yoke of looking for money. There are parents with all due respect that never see themselves for days because by the time the other person is sleeping, the other person is already outgoing. They return back in the night. How about young children? I said it, I think, a few weeks that I'm teaching. Uh, I was teaching here. A young girl of 18 years old returns back home with one million. And the parents suspect that this lady must have done something that is not correct. But they cannot rebuke her because they need it. So the lady says, thank God my parents are even backing me. When Koinonia started around this area, this region, I'm still learning the names of some of these regions, but... By the time you drive, the first, I remember after the first colonial service, I was driving home and I said, what is this? Late in the night, in the, in the heat of revival that was about to start, something was going on around this region. Are we together? And don't you think some of those people are demonic people? You have no idea. Some of the parents of those children have been determined to be irresponsible. And those children would tell you, I'm doing this to sponsor my brother. I'm doing this to sponsor my sister. Church of the Lord Jesus Christ. God must help us to get to a point where we understand how to translate the riches of Christ in glory and to make it manifest in our lives. Otherwise, a generation will come that will not call the name of the Lord again because of lack. And this is something Satan has used to cheat the church. On one hand, we have people who are uh, advocates of materialism and lust for money. The entire discussion is money, 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 money. Whether people are born again or not, whether they are saved or not, whether they love Jesus or not, whether they are passionate, money is what rules everything. That is another side of the danger. But then there are people who in error and ignorance and even in pride, have interrupted God's program 
in terms of making supplies available it is a big mistake if the church of the lord jesus christ decides to frown at economic empowerment especially through the dignity of kingdom integrity there is a, a relationship between influence and financial supplies you will be a better christian if you can give your children a healthy meal you will be a better christian if you can send them to good schools whose values you are aware of but if you do not have the resources you have to make do with what is there until your child asks you a question as a parent that you will not be able to sleep where did you learn this from and they'll say that's what my teacher taught me but you have no you, you want the child to change two years in that kind of institution and your child has become something else and becomes the reason for your pain until you drop dead how about the financing of the gospel there are many people today pastors missionaries families who love the lord with all their heart but they have been limited financially right now because of what is happening economically globally housing rates have increased you know money for gas and there are people who just smile in church and dance but the truth is that there are people who some of you are listening to me right now the one problem is this issue of finance and it has led people to depression no wonder our young people today are getting into money ritual the solution is not just to say stop young people have energy they need to make progress in their lives like I said the last time, I will never endorse this evil. But just saying stop is, is not the solution. They must be shown the kingdom's way. By the time a young man is seeing his sick mother, the sick father, and somebody tells him just go and slaughter one young girl or slaughter one young boy, carry their organs to some herbalist and suddenly become a millionaire overnight. They will do it and carry the tithe and bring it to church. And because we men of God are also incapacitated financially, even if God reveals to you that this is blood money, you will say, I will give thanks and still collect. Hallelujah. How many ministers of the gospel finish preaching to God's people and they go back depressed and in pain, wondering, their wives and children asking them is this is this what god called you to do is this how our lives will be simply because you answered the call you were a doctor you were an engineer you were an architect you were a great man is the call to ministry a call to becoming a cause that's why i made up my mind and i've told you that my first part of call is to make sure you are vibrant spiritually loving the lord growing in character confirming to the image of christ second is to grant you spiritual intelligence to understand the kingdom and understand the life of the spirit number three is to empower you by the spirit so that you become mighty and robust to do the works of the kingdom number four is to reveal purpose for you that every empowerment and enlightenment that comes to the believer is connected to kingdom come but finally to see to it that you live a life of decency with dignity, serving the Lord and living as responsible people while you do so. That is my assignment. And as the Lord keeps me alive, I will not fail in any one of them. In the name of Jesus Christ. I will never raise a people who will keep stealing from one another in the name of Jesus because of economic problems. People who sit in church and the man is wondering, there are some of you now who have traveled from the end of this city to come and you live there not because you cannot get a place closer you are trusting God and saying look if God can help me to get a vehicle for my wife and my children so that it will help me do do you think that God is so wicked that he would not want to help you on that wise no listen balanced Christianity must have a decent life represented in the proposition a life of decency and a life of dignity.